From the confessions of some of the wild flight attendants out there, to secrets about what might be inside your coffee, here are 20 airline secrets you need to know. But first, we'd like to give you a quick shout out, X Miner, for leaving us this comment on our recent water slides video. We'd like to thank all our subscribers as well for leaving great comments and keeping up with our new videos every day. Number 20. Crazy stuff in the lost and found. Losing things on planes seems to happen quite often, and airline workers come across more than just iPhones, your chapstick, or your iPad. They come across some insane stuff that would equate to their yearly salary if they were to sell it. Things like gold Rolexes, signed blank checks for over $50,000, and even some cases, wedding dresses. Most of it is returned or sold off at auction if no one claims it. You can imagine that if you were working and you came across a golden Rolex, it would be quite difficult to bring that to the lost and found. Number 19. Coffee makes you a TSA target. Getting past security is the first thing you gotta do before you get to deal with the crazy airline workers on the flight. It's common to bring back some souvenirs from your last trip, but you might want to be careful when bringing lots of coffee because it could make you a TSA target. It turns out that coffee is commonly used to mask the smell of drugs brought on carry-ons. The strong scent of freshly grounded coffee can throw off those who are searching the bags, but now they've been trained to take it as a sign that you could be an illegal smuggler who's up to no good. If TSA didn't find anything, they'll think you are still suspicious and they might tip you off to the airlines. Number 18. Your pilot could be asleep. If you had to fly a plane for 16 hours with no break, you'd probably want to take a nap too. Could you imagine being at work that long? Luckily, there's a co-pilot in order to take charge when the other one needs a power nap. It's always better to have two pilots on duty, but it's not worth the risk of a pilot controlling the plane to snooze out uncontrollably. Number 17. Old Headphones Next time you get on a plane and want to listen to some music, you should probably consider bringing some of your headphones with you. Those headphones they hand out on the planes are apparently cleaned and repackaged, making you think you just got some new ones. But it's very likely that someone is trying to recycle here. The airlines might reuse ones that have been left on the plane or find other ways to make them reusable. Number 16. Airplane Mode When the person who's controlling the massive flying object that you're sitting in tells you to do something, you should probably do it. This especially goes for airplane mode, and it turns out that by not switching your phone to this setting, it can be quite distracting to the pilot. Number 15. Getting Bargains Flight prices go up and down all the time, and you might feel like an idiot if you realize you bought a ticket that was much more expensive than another one you see online. According to some online networking websites, there is a special time to buy cheaper tickets. If you look on websites like Skyscanner, you might notice that the tickets are usually cheapest seven weeks ahead of your flight on Tuesday afternoons. For whatever reason, this seems to be the best time to get tickets for expensive flights, so you can enjoy places like Hawaii even if you're not a millionaire. Number 14. Confiscated Bottles Buying alcohol on flights can normally get a little bit expensive. This is why people try to sneak those little bottles onto the flight and hope that security doesn't catch them. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to do this, and if security catches you trying to bring your own booze, they will confiscate it. But what exactly do they do with all the alcohol they steal from you? Well, they drink it. A U.S. Transportation Security Administration official, or TSA as we know them, reported that the staff usually drinks it. Why let good alcohol just go to waste? Others have denied that this happens, but it wouldn't be too surprising coming from TSA. Number 13. Air Travel for Pets Each year, hundreds of millions of pets get a boarding pass and take the skies as well for transportation. On average, Delta flies 167 million pets per year. That's a lot of cats and dogs. But the truth is, we've seen how airlines like United treat people. How humanely can they actually treat 29 million pets each year? A former supermodel, Maggie Rizzer, claims that United killed her golden retriever. After having a dog autopsy, the veterinarian had claimed that the golden retriever actually suffered from a heat stroke. This is a very heart-wrenching story if you love pets, but if you love your pets enough, you probably shouldn't let them fly in a plane. It turns out that Alaska Airlines had the worst pet incidences to pets flown ratio. They suggest that if you have no choice but to fly your pet, be sure to write the pet's name on the carrier so the staff can comfort it better while it's on the plane. Number 12. Unalive Passengers? The plane you might be getting on could have a bunch of cold, unlively characters in the cargo section right below your feet. If you see a white box being unloaded onto the plane at the airport, chances are it does carry human remains. This makes it much easier when United has to drag out passengers involuntarily. Seriously though, on average, pilots admit to transporting about 8 of these white boxes each year. Number 11. Safer in the Back 
Although you would probably love to fly first class and get some free champagne, statistics have actually proven that sitting first class is not actually the safest. If the plane is doing a nosedive, the cockpit and the first class hit the ground first while the back of the plane is normally last to make impact. This gives you a greater chance of surviving. In a British documentary known as Plane Crash, they purposely crashed a Boeing 747 for experimental reasons. The crash test dummies in the back suffered less damage and the nose of the plane actually broke off when the bottom of the plane hits the ground first. Anyways, at least you won't feel too jealous about not being in first class when you're the one surviving. Number 10. Emergency Exits The documentary also revealed that sitting close to an emergency exit makes a pretty big difference when it comes to surviving a crash. Getting off the plane could lead to your ultimate survival. It's very possible that you might be stuck under debris, which will ultimately be your first challenge. But if you're sitting close enough to the emergency exit, chances are there are less things in your way in order to escape successfully. Your chances increase if you're sitting within six rows of the emergency exit. The experiment also revealed that the window or aisle seating made little to no difference when it came to surviving. Number 9. The Dirtiest Part of the Plane If you're kind of a germaphobe or you just really can't afford to possibly get sick after this flight, you should really consider taking some antibacterial wipes with you, especially if you're planning on using the tray in front of you. Microbiologists scrub various parts of commercial planes to see which areas had the most bacteria. They actually found out that it was the trays from four different cases. It turns out that this is the least clean part of the plane and janitors rarely have the time to clean each one, so do it yourself. Number 8. Laptops are projectiles When you're on a long flight to wherever you're going, you might feel the need to get a little bit of extra work done, but it's probably for the best that you keep your tablets and laptops stored away safely. The reason we have to store laptops or tablets in the overhead compartments is because they can easily turn into projectiles when there's turbulence. You certainly do not want to get hit in the head with a flying electronic device. Number 7. Gross Water when it comes to ordering drinks, flight attendants recommend that you don't drink the coffee or the tea, nor should you ever consider drinking the tap water from the bathroom. An EPA study found that one in every eight planes failed the agency's water safety standards. Airplanes tap water is used in the coffee and the tea, and bottled water can be very scarce. The EPA actually discovered that the tap water was infected with salmonella and even insect eggs. It was also discovered that the longer the flight was, the more bacteria the tap water contained. You should also maybe even avoid using the tap water to wash your hands and just bring your hand sanitizer. Number 6. Gross Food you probably consider getting a proper meal on a plane, but is there really such a thing? It actually turns out, scientifically speaking, high altitudes can actually affect your ability to taste, and the lack of humidity so high up dehydrates your nasal passages. So any kind of gourmet food probably still won't taste good. The food is also loaded up with hidden salt. This is to increase the taste and also to help keep it fresh. The airline companies have also caught on that cutting corners in meals can result in big profits. One company started removing one olive from every pre-packaged salad, and they managed to make off with $40,000 extra dollars that year. Number 5. Overbooked Flights we all saw the controversy that surrounded United when a guy refused to leave his overbooked flight. Well, good for him. He was actually doing the right thing. Airlines might be willing to give you a $200 voucher at first, but if enough people refuse, they typically keep on increasing the price until enough people get off the plane, or eventually when they have to drag you off. United Airlines can actually now offer you up to $10,000 if you get off your flight, so you are certainly entitled to much more than a measly $200 voucher. The guy who actually got dragged off the flight ended up getting a huge payday, but the settlement remained disclosed. It's safe to say that he received millions of dollars afterwards. That doctor will be screaming all the way to the bank. Number 4. Flying Freaky Class Some exhibitionists out there might be willing to spice things up a little bit and experiment with their lover or a promiscuous stewardess in your dreams on a plane. This is known as reaching the Mile High Club, and the flight workers say they'll catch people 9 out of 10 times. You usually have to be able to finish things up quickly to get membership to this club, because the usual thing that gets people caught is that the passengers are complaining that the bathroom hasn't been open for a while. One case reported that there was turbulence one time, and the couple forgot to lock the door. They ended up falling out of the bathroom with their pants down. Other flight attendants claim that they don't really care what happens behind the closed doors of an airplane bathroom, as long as the customers aren't complaining about anything. Number 3. Pilot and Flight Attendant Relationships 
Now this is certainly against airline policies, but many anonymous posts about relationships between pilots and flight attendants have emerged in recent years. It seems rather convenient since the pilots and the flight attendants are always going to the same place, are often placed in the same hotel provided by the airline company. And many might be married, but all those long nights on the flights sure can get lonely. Number 2. Instagrams There's no doubt that flight attendants have some great Instagrams with all the cool places they travel to but it looks like this female pilot is clearly doing it right. The beautiful 25-year-old pilotess Maria Peterson was caught taking a selfie from a selfie stick that you see in this photo. Some websites try to pass her off as some kind of inspirational role model that shows how women can get jobs in male-dominated environments. But if you take a look at her Instagram, these cockpit selfies just seem a tad immature, unprofessional, and it's most likely against airline policies. And number one, planes with parts missing. There's tens of thousands of different parts to planes, but instead of missing out on profit and having to repair the plane back to full health, some airlines decide that they're safe to fly anyways. Planes don't need all parts to fly, but it probably could fly more smoothly if the plane had all the parts to it. In fact, an engineer came forward and admitted that they are able to fly aircraft even if a huge list of things are missing from it. Yikes, just don't forget the wings please. Hey guys, thanks for watching and be sure to hit that subscribe button for new videos every day.